Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about the 16 books that I've read so far in November. Baby, baby. You heard that right. I read 16 books in 15 days. I'm very proud of myself, not gonna lie. <laughs> Um, it is winding down to the end of the semester. So you know what I decided to do instead of do end of the semester assignments? Read. <laughs> Probably need to sort out my priorities. Okay, okay. I only have one more class day left and then I am a zun with college. So I am so excited, but I need to get those assignments done. Okay, I get that. So I haven't read all that much since the 15th. Today's the 18th. I haven't picked up I don't think a single book because I've been doing assignments okay <laughs> anyway enough of my little rant we also are joined by Katniss or Kiki give me Kiki she's choosing to be she's choosing to be off screen right now she's she's literally right there say hi Kiki Anyway, let's dive right on into these books, okay? We are first going to be starting out with a new favorite of mine. This is Lord of the Fading Lands by C.L. Wilson. This is actually a book that I have on my five star predictions video for 2022. So you will know more of my thoughts in that video when it comes out. This is a fantasy romance series that I feel like is so, so, so slept on. Servy her noises. My cats are very interested in the things that I decided to move back home currently. Like Clifford is having a ball right now. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> this fantasy romance series is so good. This is so slept on and the cover probably does not help people pick it up because one of the reasons why honestly I didn't want to pick this one up is because the cover I was like, why is there a giant cat on the cover? And I figured out why there's a giant cat on the cover and it's so bizarre. This is basically a fantasy romance dealing with faded mates. Whoa, dudes, chill. <laughs> anyway, this is a fantasy romance filled with faded mates, royalty, magic. Oh my gosh. This is about a heroine named Elis Eliseta and she believes to be a normal human girl in the fading not fading lands i'm sorry in this fantasy world the fading lands are where the fae live she's a human living in like the normal i don't remember the name of it but the normal realm of this world and she has been adopted she was adopted she was found in the woods as a little baby by her parents her dad is a woodcarver and she just lives a normal ordinary girl life right in this kingdom there are fae well they live in a separate kingdom but they help protect i believe like the human realm there are these creatures called terrans which are kind of like these cat creatures that can fly <laughs> i know it's really weird but they're these creatures that can fly and they um are very magical they're fae they're very powerful and so rain is the last terran soul which is a terran that could shift into human form and when he is flying to the human realm, he is able to sense his fated mate and he realizes that it is Eliseta. He swoops in and basically immediately claims her as his. And so this whole book is about him trying to woo and court Eliseta to convince her to be his shaitani, which is your fated mate. He calls her his shaitani. Oh my freaking god. I freaking love, love all the pet names or terms of endearment that he uses for Elisetta. Oh my gosh. I thoroughly enjoyed this one and I feel like this series is so slept on. By the way, when he shifts into a, a freaking flying cat, I just pretend he's like Reese and he just flies with wings. He's not a freaking cat. Because <laughs> so I'm like, why do you have to be a cat, Theo Wilson? Why does he have to be a cat? <laughs> like he's like this giant panther creature cat. I'm like, I'd rather just him look like Reese, so that's what I pretend in my brain. I just also want to mention C.O. Wilson's writing is so amazing, especially for a fantasy romance book. I've read a few of her fantasy romances. She's a phenomenal fantasy romance author. She is probably one I will now go to when I need a recommendation for fantasy romance. So you can find out my actual rating when that video comes out probably next month. So I'm really excited for you to learn more about this book, but this series in general is just so, so, so great. Um, for memorable quotes in here, there is this made up language that C.O. Wilson has put in this book for the Fae. And so I love when he uses the Fae language in here. So one of the quotes says like, Feriza Kuchai Kem Sura Shaitani, your soul calls out mine answers, beloved. Like that's like a term that they use. Another memorable quote is, the Fae find a beauty in the soul. That is where true beauty always lies. And believe me, Elisetta Baristani, your soul is beautiful indeed. Ah, oh, 
Love that. Trigger warning in here, stabbing, blood, gore, attempted essay, not from the hero, from another guy, um, forced engagement, not from the hero, um, and very vivid nightmares. Um, for tropes, it's a fantasy romance. There's Fae, um, there are Fae mates and shifters. And yeah, I really hope more people pick up this series because it is so good. You might hear about book two later on in this video. Next is Stolen by an Alien by Amanda Milo. This is a reread for me. I read this, I want to say in the very beginning of my alien romance journey um, years ago. And I was very underwhelmed. I think I gave this like three, 2.5 stars uh, the first time around. Um, and I read one of the later books in the series, I believe book seven. Um, and I felt a little lost because they technically can be read, uh, read as standalones, but I still felt lost because I didn't read any of the books like in between them. And so I was like, you know what? I got all of the audiobooks for this series during the audible sale like a couple months ago and so let's just reread them and so a lot of the books in this video are going to be from this series okay this whole series is basically just about human women falling for a specific alien species or in this alien world you know um so the heroine in this one has been uh, illegally abducted from earth apparently humans look very much like an alien species called the grafala which are um, aliens that are considered princesses. And the only difference between, there's a few differences, but the main one is Grafala have these wings, think like Agatar, these wings. And so this alien that's like on the cover, um, he finds her um, about to get essayed by these gross aliens who bought her from an auction and he saves her thinking that he's saving this princess. Um, and there's this giant language barrier between the two. They are not able to communicate throughout the majority of this book. And he's trying to reunite her with her Grafala people, even though she's not a Grafala. <laughs> Upon reread, I liked it more, I think. Um, I've gotten way more well-versed in my alien romances, you know? So um, I ended up giving this one four stars. And I really found the world building in here very enjoyable. I will say, I think one of the main reasons why I didn't love this book as I thought I did upon like when I first read it was because this book very, very, very much sets up all the other books in the series. You get introduced to all the other couples, all the other characters. And so I felt a little lost because I felt like the romance between the two main characters was not taking precedence. precedence. Um, Amanda Milo was more so setting up other relationships, but I can see how that helped the other books, if that makes sense. Now I can. Four tropes for this one. Um, it's an alien romance. There's alpha heroes. Uh, it's a forbidden romance. Um, it's on Kindle Unlimited. There's a language barrier. And we have a worshiping hero. Again, I give this book four to five stars. I then read book two, which is Rescued by an Alien. This one is about Zadion and Callie. And you meet these two in the previous book in the series. Um, it takes place during during book one and then for a chunk of time after book one so um so you kind of get a little bit of book one in these two characters perspective plus more so callie is our human woman and she's going through some traumatic things she was essayed a lot before she was finally rescued by the good aliens and she is dealing with a lot of traumatic things and so zadion is her fated mate um he realizes that right when he sets eyes on her and he's gonna try everything to keep his human woman safe and to help her deal with all of this trauma. This is definitely a book where you need to read directly after reading book one. I feel like it's like a package deal. You should read these two together. Um, I honestly, I know these books say that they can be read as standalones. I don't, I don't, I don't think that. <laughs> I think you should read them in order because if not, you would be very lost, especially the first four. The first four books in the series have to be read in order. Basically, I feel like all back to back or you will forget stuff or you'll be very lost. This book has a lot of dark points, so please be aware to running for SA trauma and violence. I overall really liked this one. I gave it 3.5 stars. It was okay. For tropes, it's alien romance and there is disability rep. The hero is actually hard of hearing. I took a break from alien romance to read <laughs> As If I Wouldn't Fall by Jessica Kane. I read this one because Samantha, Samantha a messaged me on Instagram. She's like, Avery, have you read this one yet? Cause I think like me, Samantha and Rachel all are like <laughs> complete suckers for like Jessica Kane, Cassie Mint, those kinds of no toes, those, man, I can't speak, those types of novellas. So she was like, Avery, you have to read this. It's freaking insane. I was like, okay. Cause then she told me the main thing that happened in here. And there is a, certain name tattooed on a specific body area on a guy 
trying to keep this as peachy as possible y'all um and i was like what like her name is where <laughs> before they were even together his name her name was where it's just a romance that takes place in a high school setting it's just take place in high school i believe they're both 18 and the hero and heroine have always been like longing after each other the guy's kind of like her stalker he follows her around school chases all the guys away um but they've never really talked to each other and then one day her car something happens to her car like she needs to take it into the shop and he happens to own the mechanic shop in town and um she takes it there and it kind of like sparks them to finally start talking to each other and admitting their feelings and yeah he has a bunch of tats and there is a specific one in a specific area with her name on it before they even like started talking. Yeah, I gave this three stars. This was utterly ridiculous. So yeah. I did read a uh, book three in the Stolen by an Alien series, which is one by an alien. This one was not my favorite. Um, it was a fun read, um, but this is an MFM and I'm not a big fan of MFMs. I like more MMFs or um, where everyone's together and this was not that and I don't know it was a little bit strange at times because the one of the one of the alien creatures like she literally says that he looks like a kangaroo like what a kangaroo would look like and I'm like okay <laughs> I don't know why I find that more strange than the freaking spider aliens that I read about <laughs> but I don't know why I just do but this just wasn't my favorite it's kind of boring at times a lot of the time they're just on this spaceship doing nothing with this language barrier between all three of them and i'm like what what is going on what is happening nothing is happening so uh three stars i liked it because of the world because i've been reading the other books in the series but their romance is probably my, probably my least favorite out of all of them i took another break from alien romance to pick up a doozer um uh, this is what and bothered by fiona davenport i wanted to read this uh series this is the monster between the sheets series which are novellas that take place in this like monster town um written by different authors and so i wanted to just go in order and this one was just mm, <laughs> no thanks it was not great it was way too insta lovey for me i believe like the hero um when he was i think like in his early 20s the town got like this magical thing happened to them so everyone in the town like turned to have like magical abilities so now he has not been able to like touch anybody for years because he has like an electric current through his body and so um the heroine in here is visiting this town with her family i believe she's like 18 or something and he's like 40. anyway she's like walking in the woods at night and he finds her and she trips and falls and he catches her accidentally and like touches her skin and does not electrocute her and he's like well, what does that mean um anyway you can read it if you want it was just so so insta lovey for me very insta lovey like after he like catches her fall he takes her to his cabin and they're immediately like i'm so like you just met excuse me anyway two stars <laughs> i read the fourth book in the stolen by the alien series which is craved by alien this is just about one of the couples we met in the previous books i can't really say really anything else about that it's about gracie and is it damien gracie and no it's dorraine 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 and gracie um yeah no don't read this, this is a standalone it's about dorraine and gracie dorraine is this like alien species with wings and gracie is a human woman who's experienced some essay trauma from being abducted and um yeah so 3.5 stars it was okay it's not my favorite in the series um I just feel like it's just like a different retelling of the same story I then read number six in the series because I've already read book five which I love book five um so I jumped to book six this is Beth's stable you've read about Beth and her five men she's five men in the previous books in the series you meet her and the guys in book one um and i already knew that i was not gonna probably be a big fan of this because again this is one girl with many guys and the guys are not together i just like not my i don't like those like i much prefer everyone to be together but this is just beth about beth and her five guys like traveling through space and when she's abducted from earth she's pregnant and so you read about her in the, in the first book in this series um giving birth to her baby and so all five of these guys are wanting to be a dad to this baby and that's about it it's about beth and her five guys not very entertaining for me uh three stars it was okay i love amanda milo but like the book some of the books in the series like i've already i feel like i've already read the gems i feel like the best ones in this series are book five book 5.5 5, book seven and book one like i feel like if you were to read any of these because there's what eight books in the series 
those are the only ones I'd probably recommend, honestly. I love Amanda Milo, but some of these books are just feel like very reused to me and I don't really care for MFM books personally. So a few of these were a miss and I hope to read other Amanda Milo books that are not in this series that I feel like I could enjoy way more. I then read an arc of Resisting Maxu by Victoria Aveline. She was so sweet and reached out to me on Instagram and was like, I would love to send you a copy of um, my new release. This is book six in the Calcanian series. And I was so excited for this. I love this series. And so this I would say is probably my third favorite in the series. Book one is top favorite. And then the one before this is probably my second favorite. Um, but this one is obviously an alien romance. It's the sixth book in her series. This is a romance between Maxu and Meg. And Meg is a human woman living on Calcania um, after her abduction from Earth. And she is thriving on this new planet. She absolutely loves being there because her life on Earth was very uneventful. Um, she was married to a guy um, she did not really care for and who was honestly awful to her. Um, so she's so happy to be out of that situation. But she is very shocked when one of the alien men um, on this planet like starts getting his mating marks and claims that Meg is his. But Meg was so excited to like be on this new planet and not be with a man for a while, like for a very long time. She's like, I've been with my husband for so long, for like 10 years, I'm ready to be on my own for a while. And then like almost right when she gets there, she has me and she's like are you kidding me <laughs> i really enjoyed this one i love how persistent maxi was in a respectful way at least like not in a bad way like he was very persistent saying like you're mine i don't think you understand what mating means like being mated to someone but like you're my mate this is happening okay get with it <laughs> i also just loved meg's love for the planet i loved that um i feel like you got to see more of the planet in general the other cities within the planet which is cool and the ending wow the ending has me very excited for the next book in the series. I DM'd Victoria and I was like, I am so excited for your next book. This was so good. And she was like, I've gotten so many DMs about people being up in arms about that ending. So I'm excited. But this book does end in an HEA, just saying. But the next book in the series is definitely going to be sparked from the ending that is this book. So for tropes in here, it's an alien romance. And you have definitely a worshiping hero and it is Faded Mates. I gave this one four out of five stars. Next is one that I've been looking forward to for a while. This is Taken by the Dark Elf King by Charlotte Swan. She is a TikToker that I follow that I love. She is the TikToker that kind of sparked the blow up for IPB on TikTok. And so I just love her and her love for monster romances. Like, yes, girl, I'm with you. So this is her debut. It's on KU, by the way, if you want to check it out. Um, But this is her fantasy romance and I really wanted to read this book because it was written by her, but also I've been loving like the quotes that she's been putting on her TikTok to like bring you in, you know? And it definitely brought me in, definitely did. So this one is a trick you into marriage romance. It's fantasy romance and the two main characters are Elvi and Arcane. And they're from two different kingdoms. You have the light elves and the dark elves you can kind of see on the cover. And so things go a little bit off the rails when Arcane invites Elvi and her family to this ball um, where he kind of, as an end result, tricks LV into marrying him. This is very Beauty and the Beast-esque. Um, he is very much a brute at the beginning and has to learn how to soften his heart for this woman he's falling for. And so the reasons why he's marrying LV kind of like shift when he starts to get to know her and actually starts falling for her. I really loved the vibes of this book. The world was really cool. Like the, just the general dark and light elf thing was so cool to me. I feel like this would be a great starter book for people who are not a seasoned like fantasy romance reader. If you want to get into fantasy romance, I feel like this is a great starter book for that. I just personally felt like there were aspects of this book that were very rushed, but that's just a me thing and the way that I really like my books paced. And so yeah, I can't, I, I really can't wait to read the next book in this series, like, because I think it's an orc romance. So I'm very excited. I ended up giving this one 3.5 out of 5 stars. I then picked up Rush by Emma Scott. This was on my TBR for this month. Look at me reading books off of my TBR. I'm so proud of myself. But I've been really wanting to just read all of Emma Scott's backlist because I really enjoy her. And yeah, this is probably one of her backlist title. This is the first backlist title from her that I've actually really enjoyed. I've read books one and two in this series and kind of hated both of them. This one, amazing. So good. I feel like this is this possibly the start for the Emma Scott that I know and love today. Charlotte in here is a Juilliard graduate. Um, she plays the violin and she's really struggling to make ends meet to be able to afford living in New York City. Then things turn for the better when she ends up getting a kind of caretaking position 
um, for this guy. Um, you read about how she gets the position in general, but she ends up getting hired to be a caretaker for this guy. But the man that she is going to help take care of is probably the grumpiest grump ever. She is not what he anticipated. His name is Noah and he's experienced a lot of loss in his life. Um, he used to be this world traveler who would do kind of like extreme sports and extreme tricks, but then he got into an accident, which uh, I believe hurt his back and spinal cord. It left him with the inability to see. And so he is blind now. So he's really struggling to live this new life. Um, he's not able to do all the things that he he loves like he's not able to do the sports that he loves anymore he's not able to jump off cliffs and do high dives and um he even thinks that he will never be able to write his articles again about doing those amazing stunts but then charlotte comes into his life and kind of helps him realize where beauty can be in his life and where his passion is and how his life is not over simply because he cannot see. I just love this. The way that Noah just completely softens and becomes a puddle for this woman after a while. It takes it takes a while for this grump to grump down. <laughs> they really help each other find their footing in life because they're both kind of lost at the beginning of this. I feel like Noah is, is more like prevalent, you know, more present on the outside, whereas Charlotte is very lost on the inside internally because of some traumatic things that she has gone through. I just love them. This was so good. This I feel like this is the Emma Scott that I love. I don't know what those first two books were, but this one is so stinking good. I did give this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars, not a full 5, just because the conflict wasn't necessarily my favorite thing. I don't think it was done the way that I wanted it done, if that makes sense. So again, but that, that's a me thing. That's a personal preference. Um, so Tropes, it's a big city romance. This takes place in New York City. Um, there's a brooding hero, a caretaking scene, damaged hero, forced proximity, musicians, um, a reclusive hero, disability representation, and a scarred character. I give this book, again, 4.5 out of 5 stars. I then read Drakkar, which is book 4 in the Seven Brides for Seven Alien Brothers series by Honey Phillips. I talked about the first three books in the series last month, and I don't really talk, want to talk too much about this because it's basically just what the title series is. You read about Drakkar and the other books in the series. He ended up taking a human woman from the human village on this planet and taking her back to his home and cave to convince her to be his bride. And that's basically it. But this one's very unique too because the heroine was in a, an abusive relationship and she is a single mother with a very small newborn baby who has colic. And he ends up like drugging the mom, like, like, like drugging her, right? To like take her back with him. And then sees the baby and he's like, oh, there's a baby here. I'm going to take her too with me and she's going to be my kid. They're going to be mine. Let's do it. That can sound really creepy, but <laughs> like, it's actually really sweet. Like, he's really sweet about it. He's like, oh, um, this guy is abusive to these girls. So I'm going to take them with me and I'm going to protect them and make them mine. I love that. And he's like, we're going to be, we're going to be a family. This is going to happen. So super cute, super sweet. I give this one four stars. Next read was Tentacles and Triathlons by Ashley Bennett, the second book in her Leviathan fitness series. Oh, if you just want a no angst monster romance series, oh, pick these books up. They are so good. So this is a romance between Reese and Cyrus. So Reese is the brother to Tegan, the heroine human from the first book in this series. And Cyrus is one of her, um, Reese's mate's friends. So Cyrus is the tentacle creature you see on the cover. And uh, Reese is the human guy. So Reese has a little bit of past trauma with monsters. So he's very scared when his sister tells him that she's going to be marrying a monster. And he's like, oh gosh. And so he's starting to go to the kind of like engagement party, get to know you parties that our sister is putting on with her now mate. And he is getting to know uh, many monsters. And one of the monsters he meets is Cyrus. So Cyrus is a kraken creature. And right when he uh, sees Reese, he knows that is his fated mate. <laughs> and um, he kind of has to like keep it a little secret because he knows that Reese is kind of uncomfortable around monsters and he doesn't want to scare him. But then Reese asks him to train for a triathlon. Uh, Reese is going to do, participate in triathlon and he's not the best swimmer. And since Cyrus is a kraken who spends all of his time in the water, um, he's like, will you help train me? And so he helps train Reese to swim. And so the more they spend time together while training, the more they fall for each other. And man, there's this one scene where they're like bickering and fighting after a training session and they just like slam each other against the wall. 
so good. Um, this was really cute and really sweet. I really love these two characters together. For tropes, you have artistic character. Uh, Cyrus the Kraken is an artist. He's a painter. And I love the discussion of painting in here. I love it. Um, Faded Mates. It's on Kindle Unlimited. It's a low angst. It's an MM romance. There's monsters. There's no third act breakup. And it is a sports romance because a lot of this book is talking about this triathlon and training and swimming. So yeah, I gave this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next, I read a very short novella. This is The Stoneheart Bride by Katie Wilde. I like Katie Wilde. She's a author I pick up every now and then when I just want a palette cleanser that's not a Cassie Mint or Jessica Kane. Like the hers are more fantastical paranormal fantasy ones. Um, so the cover of this one honestly drew me in. So this is a very short like 50 page fantasy romance novella that takes place in Katie Wilde's Deadlands series. I feel like you could read this one as a standalone, honestly. So this is the romance between Flora and Brom. Flora is the niece to a king in this realm. And the king is trying to arrange a marriage between Flora and Brom. Brom is kind of like an alien, whoa, alien. I meant barbarian, <laughs> barbarian warlord leader. So Flora and Brom have been getting to know each other while he's staying at the palace. And Flora is quite taken with him and is falling for him. But those feelings that she has developed for him kind of shatter when she overhears a conversation of her uncle like telling Brom like I'd love you to marry my niece to secure an alliance and to get married to her and Brom is like no that's not gonna happen that will never happen and um Flora is completely crushed and after that kind of conversation uh, she ends up getting kidnapped by orcs and Brom goes out to rescue her. I'm just gonna leave it at that. It was really, cause it is only 50 pages, okay? This was a really fun novel. I really, really, really loved it. I don't feel like it was a full five stars though. So that's why I gave it 4.5. Um, for trigger warnings, you have dis descriptions of barbarian violence. So using swords and axes and threats of cannibalism. So um, tropes, barbarians, fantasy romance. It's on Kindle Limited. There is longing, They're, they are royals and um it's a novella and we have like a kind of like a savior romance like he saves her from a situation so i then decided to read the second book in the terran soul series so the first book i talked about in this video i read book two i'm not gonna say anything else but this is a continuation to eliseta and rain's story this book did have me freaking on the edge of my seat the entire time this series is so good there's so many like twists and turns like you think one thing and then it gets completely flipped the next second and i'm somebody who overthinks like everything and i'm not I'm, like i'm able to predict things very easily this series i am not able to do that because i feel like seal wilson's just like bang bang here you go here you go here you go complete complete twist i loved it i'm so excited to read book three after this ending i will say i don't know what the other two books are like because i think there's two other books in the series after this each book i feel like ends in a way that's at least like satisfying for the end of the book but it leaves you wanting more where you're like okay it's gonna continue it's not like an sjm book where you finish reading it and you're like cliffhanger about to fall off the edge your heart is like in your chest and you have to wait a whole year for a new book that's not what this series is um i feel like it leaves you satisfied at least for the ending but very much anticipating the next book a memorable quote in this one is from rain i freaking love him so much okay he says my heart has followed where my soul has led kevo san elisetta i love you <laughs> I love when she freaking uses that hey freaking language. It's so good. Um, trigger warnings in here for very vivid nightmares. Elisetta has some very vivid nightmares. Torture, needles, blood, gore. Very fantasy romance-esque. You'll get a lot of those in fantasy romances. Tropes, fantasy romance, faded mates, magical shifters, and there are fae in here. I give this one also 4.5 out of 5 stars. And the last book that I would love to mention in this very long mid-month wrap-up is uh, Wed to the Alien Warlord by January Bell. This is the first book in her Accidental Alien Bride series. This series I feel like is going to be very fun. So in this story in the beginning, Earth is about to be like invaded or taken over by some evil aliens, and uh, the government kind of like sends out this group of uh, human women who are trained uh like military trained uh, to go and get this um, very important technology from good aliens and so they travel all the way across space to this planet and um they think they're just going to take place uh take part in this welcoming ceremony get the technology go back home to earth and send it on their way um but they are wrong <laughs> so when they get there they don't they don't understand the aliens um they don't have translators yet and um they're team they're they're participating in this welcoming ceremony but it's not actually a welcoming ceremony it's actually a wedding ceremony so each of the human women are getting married to one of these aliens 
and the aliens think that the women like know like because they thought the government like told them like yeah no you're actually like basically sacrificial lambs you're gonna get married to all of us like that was the deal the girls don't know about this deal um and so <laughs> it's like something happens at the beginning of this book where they're being kind of like attacked during the ceremony and um the hero and the heroine of this story um the heroine's name is nikki and the guy is Suve uh no that's the planet name draz 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 okay so draz is this warlord and he ends up saving um uh nikki and they're actually mated and married she doesn't know this right before they get attacked each of the girls gets a translator chip finally put in their ear and when they are attacked he ends up like rescuing her taking her away and they have to survive in this jungle together and he like kind of drops the bomb he's like hey wife are you doing good and she's like wife what i'm not your wife he's like uh yeah you just married me and she's like no i did not and he's like hey, yeah you did <laughs> so yeah i really enjoyed this one so it's about them trying to like survive in this jungle and then reunite with also all the other human women and their respective now husbands so each book in the series is going to i assume would be about the respective couples that got together in the other books i love a good language barrier trope in here i feel like this one was done really well with with that i really wonder how it's going to play into the rest of the books in the series because uh, you read about it in the book, but not every uh, woman's translator now works. Like some of them are faulty and they're not working correctly. And so the whole time they've been in the jungle, they have not been able to understand their now husband. <laughs> the two characters in here were very sweet. They had a hot fun side, um, but I definitely wish that there was just more. I just felt like sometimes the romance was a little bit surface level for me and they fell in love very quickly. For tropes, you have alien romance, a kick butt heroine. Uh, it's on Kindle Unlimited. There's a language barrier. Um, the couple is married and you have a worshiping hero. I give this book four out of five stars. Anyways, there you have it. Those are all of the books that I read in the first half of November. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a um, the wedding emoji, any wedding related emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I'll see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.